Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we greet you with uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from my sitting room here in my home in the Caribbean island of Trinidad. Uh, at this time, uh, there are probably just less than one week left in this month of Muharram, uh, and then the month will end, and we will say um, we will begin the month of Safar, inshallah. And uh, I greet you with the news, the sad news of this act of uh, of terrorism, uh, uh, the attempt to assassinate. Uh, my friend and my brother, Professor uh, Alexander Dugin, uh, in Moscow. Uh, who are those who would want to attempt such a very high-profile act of terrorism in the streets of Moscow? Who would want to do that? And why would they want to assassinate a prominent Russian philosopher and political thinker and scholar who is well known around the world and who supports the Russian government in its uh, effort to respond to the threat which has come from Ukraine, Professor Alexander Dugin. And my answer is that you don't need a PhD to realize that this was an effort to assassinate Professor Dugin in order to seek to escalate the war. That's what Russia at this time wants to try to build peace with Ukraine, searching for a way to end the war. But those evil people, and you have to be really a schoolboy not to recognize their evil, they don't want the war to end. They want the war to continue. They want the war to escalate. They don't care for Ukraine. They will fight Russia to the last Ukrainian. They're using Ukraine for fulfilling their agenda of war with Russia. Ukraine is just a toy for them. Their target is Russia. And they don't want the war to end. They want the war to escalate. And if they had succeeded in assassinating Professor Alexander Dugin, that would have made news around Russia, that would have infuriated the Russian people, the Russian government would have no alternative but to escalate the war, to respond to the assassination of a prominent Russian like this on the streets of Moscow, to respond in such a way that the war would escalate. That was the plan. So who would want that? It has to be a secret service, secret service agency like the CIA of the United States, one of the secret service agencies of the West or of Ukraine. That's understandable, that's perfectly understandable that they are the ones who planned it and executed it. But what happened at the end was that Instead of the, the, the father being assassinated, unfortunately, the daughter was the one who was assassinated. She was not the target. The target was the father. Let me pause to mention to you, and uh, in addition to sending my condolences through this video uh, to Professor Dugan and to his wife and to the family, uh, on, the, on this very sad death of their daughter, that when I was in Moscow, at the invitation of Professor Dugin, uh, seven, eight years ago, perhaps, um, I met with Professor Dugin several times. Uh, he invited me to give the lecture at the State University of Moscow. And then we had a long interview, he and I, uh, at his office. And uh, we had several other meetings. Uh, the president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, came to Moscow at the time when I was there. 
and Dugin met with him. And from that meeting, Dugin came to meet with me at my hotel. And we had lunch together in the restaurant. It's an Azhari restaurant close to the hotel. And uh, on the last evening that I was in Moscow, I, I, I invited uh, my team to come and have lunch, dinner with me in a halal restaurant, an Azhari restaurant. And uh, Professor Dugan unfortunately had another engagement and he could not come. But he sent his wife and he sent his daughter, the same girl, Daria. And they came to the restaurant and they sat close to me and I had a chance to chat with them and I told, I told Daria, you resemble my daughter Hira, I remember. And uh, we had a very nice evening together. Uh, we were about 15 people in the restaurant that night, not knowing that this is the last time I would ever see Daria, um, Daria Dugina. She was the one who was driving the car when the bomb exploded and, and the assassination took place. So yes, I did meet with Daria Dugina and I met with her mother and I send my condolences to Professor Dugin and to his dear wife on the death of their daughter. Uh, what is going to be the likely implications now of this attempted assassination of Professor Dugin and the assassination of his daughter? The, the Russian uh, secret, uh, security services have already identified a woman from Ukraine who belongs to the Azov Nazi group uh, who traveled from Ukraine to Moscow with her daughter uh, in July and who rented an apartment in the same building in which Daria was living. And obviously she made friends with Daria because she was also invited to be present at the lecture where her father, Professor Dugain, was speaking on the day that she was assassinated. That woman was there at the lecture. So there was social contact between them. And as soon as the assassination took place, that woman left Moscow, fled from Russia. And so the Russian security services have pinpointed her as the, uh, a link in the assassination. But of course, there would have to be others who are part and parcel of that team to help her to locate the apartment where Daria was living. To get a lease on that apartment, a short term lease, you have to have people helping you in Moscow. And the Russian investigating team will eventually get to know who were these people who were helping her and supported her in the effort to. Uh, uh, plan this assassination. Now then, we will get to know in the future, in time as time comes. Russia has already taken this case to the Security Council of the United Nations Organization, and the United States, of course, and Europe is trying to play it down. They don't, their, their favorite, <laughs> their favorite is Ukraine. They don't want Ukraine to look bad. That's their way of. Um, responding to they don't they are people without integrity and those who are supporting the West in the war are people who have lost integrity. I make no I make no um, reservations in using this kind of language because you have to go back in history to know what are the relations between the West and Russia and what was being planned for Russia in Ukraine before you make any judgment concerning Russia's military intervention in Ukraine. The important part of this comment that I want to make is uh, what will be Russia's response. And I can only hope and pray that Russia will have the wisdom. Russia has already demonstrated wisdom and uh, caution in the matter of Ukraine by not unnecessarily escalating the war not responding disproportionately. It was more for reciprocal responses. The Russia would not now act rashly and escalate the war with Ukraine. We hope that that does not happen. That if there's any Russian response, well, since your secret service did it to us, 
our secret service can do it to you and we our hands will be clean the same way you say your hands are clean i think perhaps that this is going to be the result that the russian secret service the kgb i think it's called will respond on behalf of the russian people and uh, uh, that, there, that there will be no uh, direct escalation of the war as a result of this attempt to uh, assassinate Professor Dugin. Mm -hmm. I was hoping and I'm still hoping that there would be a ceasefire and as soon as there is a ceasefire I plan to return one more time to visit Moscow and of course when I do I will meet once again with Professor Dugin and may Allah grant Russia protection and may Allah guide Russia in this evil effort to try to wage Armageddon world war against Russia and China and may Allah grant Russia victory uh, in Ukraine thank you wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh